on to the second of NHL games that I probably should have watched, but I didn't because I was commentating on Junior B Hockey. Let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks and their game yesterday. Again, I didn't see it. I didn't see the game. I saw a few highlights here and there earlier today, but... For the most part, I don't know too much about this game aside from what I've read online, in group chats, on Twitter, on Reddit, and just taking a look at the fan base in general. The Vancouver Canucks have defeated the St. Louis Blues 4-3 in a shootout in a game that ultimately puts them at a four-game winning streak. The Vancouver Canucks haven't been on a four-game winning streak for over a full calendar year. Yeah, that's right. Last season, the Vancouver Canucks never reached four wins in a row. This season, they did that six games into the year. So obviously, we're going to win the Cup this year. And all joking aside, this team has proved then and again that it actually has a whole bunch of bite when it comes to taking games offensively, leading the charge, and winning those tight ones. Our four-game winning streak has two blowouts and two shootout wins, so we're really going the distance and establishing our dominance nonetheless. This time, it's the St. Louis Blues. It's the Pedersen versus the Binnington battle. The two Calder candidates who were in a pretty significant battle amongst the fan bases as to who should win the right in the and go. All we know is that Pedersen won and Binnington was second. Some people still believe that Binnington was the clear winner of the Calder last year because of his impact on the Blues and how he carried them into the playoffs. Not necessarily his playoff performance because the Calder only covers the regular season, but that's an argument for a different day. This one was notable. The Vancouver Canucks going up against the Stanley Cup champions at St. Louis, and the last time the Vancouver Canucks were actually there... If you remember, it was the last game of the season. It was a shootout loss, and we're not going to talk about that. Let's talk about the second last time the Vancouver Canucks were in St. Louis to play the Blues. It was the Elias Pettersson five-point game in December last year, the game where the Blues ended up fighting each other in practice the next day because Besser had a hat-trick, Petey went off, and after that 6-1 to loss to the Canucks, the Blues fought each other in practice, which led to the reform of the team, which eventually led to a Stanley Cup. So as you can say, the Vancouver Canucks are partly responsible of the Blues winning the Cup last year because they beat them so bad and caused them to fight amongst themselves. However, we weren't coming into this game expecting a Brock Besser hat trick. We weren't expecting Petey to get five points again. Instead, we were just hoping for a win. Demko is still in net, Markstrom is still on his leave, and the Vancouver Canucks, oh boy, they actually... Uh. It's a first quick early goal for St. Louis, and this one is kind of ugly. It's a dirty one. It's coming towards the end of the first period. The puck is thrown on net. It's scrambled. It hits a body in front. A few blues are there. They whack at it. It goes towards and hits the side of the post. Demko is out of position, and Robbie Fabry is there to pot it into the open cage. Definitely not a goal that I could say was Demko's fault. It's just an unfortunate placement of the players and the bounces as well. It's 1-0 St. Louis at the end of the first, and at this point, I'm kind of like, okay, cool, I'm doing my Sockeyes thing, I'm getting the goal updates on my phone, let's just hope for the best as the game goes along. And a few minutes into the second period, it's Michael Furland. Michael freaking Furland finally gets his first goal in the year, and I'm not going to act like it took a long time for Furland to get going, but Furland in general was coming into this season off of an illness, and he lost a whole bunch of weight, and he really wasn't healthy coming towards the start of the season, so by the time he got in, it's understandable, but he hasn't necessarily been the Michael Furland that we thought he would be at the start of the year. However, he gets a goal here, it's a shot, there's a rebound, Sutter kind of touches it, and Furland is there to bat it into the open net. Nice goal for Furland, the greasy, put it right into the slot and get the rebound kind of goals. Those are the goals that we expect Furland to score, and he's got one here. As I said, Furlan hasn't necessarily been amazing. He was taken off that top line with Petey and Besser. He's playing alongside of other guys now. He was playing with Sutter in this instance, but... 
overall, as the season goes on, I expect Furlan to become much better. I expect him to adapt to the NHL game with the Vancouver systems, and I expect him to fully recover from that illness because... Come on, he's a pro. He's an NHLer. He's a guy who's got 40 points in the past. He got 20 goals before, and I think he can do it again. It's just taken a little bit of time to get into the swing of things. Amazing. However, 43 seconds after Michael Furlan's goal, it's brought into the Canuck zone, crosses the blue line, centered over to the trailing defender. It's Alex Petrangelo, who picks up the puck, and he's got a load of room, and he just winds up and shoots. He shoots and he scores. He gets his third on the year. It's a 2-1 St. Louis lead just a few seconds after Furlan gets the game-tying goal. And then, to make things even worse, a few minutes after the Petrangelo goal, it's Vlad Tarasenko. Yeah, you know Tarasenko's a good, good NHL player and you know he's a lethal NHL goal scorer and he gets a meat. It's centered over to Schwartz, who takes a shot. The rebound comes in front. Tarasenko is there. It's a quick 3-1 lead for the Blues, taken right after Michael Furland. Day. But the Canucks don't go down without a fight. Because just 10 minutes after Tarasenko gets on the board, towards the end of the second period, it's JT Miller. What the heck? I've been talking about JT Miller in such a positive light recently. My video yesterday was talking about the trade of JT Miller and how Canucks fans may or may not have overreact. It's brought into the zone by Tyler Mott, who comes in with a shot. It hits something, bounces out in front, and JT Miller is the man right there to pot it home and bring the Canucks within one. This was a pretty good goal. It's his team leading fourth goal on the season. JT Miller has been absolutely fantastic for the Canucks so far. A huge burst of energy on that line and just pure offensive prowess with him. It's been awesome to see what he's been doing with the Vancouver Canucks. Then in the third period, things are a little bit meh. This is where I was hearing a lot of concerns about the power play, because the Vancouver Canucks had a few power play chances, they were 0 for 5 on the power play, and in the third period, they did have a whole bunch of power play opportunities, but they didn't score. In fact, there was even a 5 on 3, and they didn't score. This is where I was hearing from Canucks fans on Twitter that, hey, they looked so good, and they were doing awesome things out there. But when they were on the power play, things just slowed down. In fact, the penalties kind of took away the momentum for the Canucks, which is weird because that's not how it's supposed to work. Eventually, the Vancouver Canucks do get a tying goal, though. It's a mad scramble in front. Eventually, Petey has the puck. He tries to go one-on-one -on -one against Bennington. He dekes the guy out of his pants, just shoves it in the open cage, but there's a blue in the net to block it off. The guy was diving to block that puck from crossing the line. A huge scramble ensues, and Bo Horvat, who's open on the left wing, rushes towards the net, backhands it up over the blue in the net, and it's his first goal on the year. It took Bo a while to finally get a goal, but he's up here. Captain Bo is on the board, and the game is tied. The game is tied, and at this point, Vancouver Canucks fans on Twitter that I saw were just freaking out because they were able to score. Biddington was apparently really good the entire game, as was Thatcher Demko. And going into the overtime, things opened up a little bit, but there were no goals, so we ended up going to a shootout. And in the shootout, there was just a whole bunch of saves. Save, 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 saves. A few misses here and there. Bozak, Besser, Tarasenko, Pedersen, O'Reilly, Pearson, Shen, Miller, Perron, Edler, Steen. No goals on the shootout. Bennington and Demko standing their ground. People were freaking out because they were like, why the heck is Edler out there in the shootout and not Hughes or Horvat? One defense, Horvat hasn't been great in the shootouts in his career. Another defense, Edler used to be really good in the shootouts, if you remember in the 2011-2012 days. Edler was really good at the shootout for some reason, and Quinn Hughes, well, yeah, that's a fair argument. But eventually, it's the sixth round and the twelfth shooter on the game, Josh Levo, who comes in, cuts over to the backhand, fakes it, pulls it back over to the forehand, and he 
dives. He does the full-on Bobby Orr dive as he shoots it over the pad of Jordan Binnington. And he scores. The Vancouver Canucks score, and they win the game. It's a 4-3 final decision for the Canucks over the Blues. Four straight wins for Vancouver. Levo gets the shootout marker. Horvat and Furlan finally get goals. JT Miller adds another one. Thatcher Demko stands on his head in the shootout, and he makes the appropriate saves. And the Vancouver Canucks beat out Jordan Binnington and the St. Louis Blues. The next game is tomorrow. I will most likely watch that game. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>